What's up developers? Are you in the command line building things with the CLI all the time? And but sometimes you forget, like what's the command for this or what's the command for that? And you have to go out to the internet and ask questions to try to find the answers to find those commands you're looking for. Well, what if you didn't have to leave the command line at all? What if you could do all of it within the CLI? Well, we're gonna learn about just that today with the new GitHub Copilot CLI, a tool that allows you to ask questions in human language and get the answers that you're looking for. We're gonna learn about it right here on Cool Developer Things with Isaac. Hey folks, Isaac Levin here with a new series of videos where I'm going to be going over some of the cool things that developers can use to make their lives as developers better. And let's talk a little bit about the CLI or the command line interface. So I don't know about you, but I'm in the command line all the time doing different things, trying to figure out how to do things a bit more effectively instead of having to use an editor in some particular cases. And all the time, I, not even exaggerating, all the time I have to go out to the internet and search. Like, what's the command for this? Or what's the command for that and it really breaks up my productivity and gets me out of that developer loop that developer flow that i'm really really comfortable in and i want to talk about a tool that can help us get better in that particular regard and that tool is the github copilot cli which is a new tool that's made available by github currently it's in technical preview and i'll talk about all that in a second which allows us to ask questions in the cli using human natural language and it will give us the response we're looking for and i'd like to show you a couple of cool demos for that as well. So firstly, let's take a look at my screen. So the first thing that you were going to talk about is how do I get access to GitHub Copilot CLI? So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to github githubnext.com. And if you zoom up here, I'll zoom in and you go to githubnext.com, it's going to take you to basically all of the prototypes and all the different things that GitHub team is working on to, you know, investigate the future of, of software development. And there's going to be some things that we're familiar with already. So if you scroll down, for instance, you know, there's GitHub Copilot, which is already a product. You know, you can get GitHub Copilot and set up in your GitHub account today. Highly recommend doing that. But if you scroll up, there is a, a particular one that I want to talk about, and that's GitHub Copilot for CLI, which was announced in March of 2023, and right now it's a usable prototype. And if you want to play around with it, you can actually sign up for the technical preview. So, and how you do that is you click up the sign up for waitlist, and it'll ask you like what your email is and what your uh, GitHub alias is, and it also shows you some really interesting information about using uh, the GitHub CLI. So if you click this, I'll click the sign up button here, but I've already gotten access to it. So that particular, my GitHub handle, I've already signed up for it. And um, then it ask you, you'll get an email as well, but it'll say access the copilot for CLI at this particular NPM package and let's do that. So if we go up here and this is the GitHub Copilot CLI um, and right now it says it's in technical preview. So if you were to go and install this NPM package today, you need to be a part of that technical preview to get access to it. Um, and let's actually take a look at what we need to do to set up GitHub Copilot CLI. So it talks a little bit about, you know, the different um, prompts to run it. So question mark, question mark. So it translates natural language to shell commands. Then you have a git question mark and a gh question mark for the GitHub CLI to do those particular things. Um, and you look at supported platforms right now. It runs in Linux I mean, and we'll talk about a little bit about some additional things that we can do to make it work um, on others. But for instance, right now it's by it has a bias towards Linux um, and we'll kind of see what that looks like in a second. And then it talks about some some of the requirements so you need the minimum node version but then let's talk about the installation steps so it's as simply as running an npm install globally and then you need to authenticate so this is how it basically checks to make sure that you're in the technical preview so after you install the npm package you run github copilot cli auth and then it's going to do um, a, an authentication handshake to make sure that local version of github cli github copilot cli is actually set up and if you need to upgrade it if a new version ships you can do that here and then there's some convenience things to do so for instance, if you don't want to type in GitHub dash copilot dash CLI, you want access to some of these shorthands like I mentioned earlier. Um, this is the um, basically the, the Linux command, the bash command to be able to do that. Uh, and then it recommends if you want to do that for future sessions, add that to your ZSHRH or your bash HRC file. Um, and then it shows you a cool little demo. Um, but let's actually, instead of looking at the video, let's actually take a look at a couple of experiences. So right now I'm in Windows Subsystem for Linux on my Windows machine. So, so I can type in things like uname, and as you can see, it says Linux here. But for instance, what if I want to 
do a couple of interesting things. Like for instance, one of the things that I always end up doing, so like for instance, I have Docker on here, right? So Docker version. So if if I take a look at this, and this is shows me like all the information around Docker, I have a really hard time like some with some Docker commands. Like for instance, what if I want to get like the you know last 10 Docker logs, right? So like for instance, I can do something like question mark, question mark, which is the shorthand for a particular bash command and say, um, how do I can type right? How do I list the last five logs in a Docker container? Right. And then this will um, ask Copilot and it gives me the instruction. So Docker logs dash dash tail five. And it actually gives me the option so I can run this command or I can revise the query if I want to. And it actually gives you an explanation, too. So it says Docker logs is used to view the logs of a container. Tail five specifies that we only want to see the last five lines of the log. So that's really, really cool. I don't have a particular container in this instance that I want to be able to do that. But I just want to show you like how you can use it. Let's actually take a look at a different example. So like, for instance, I use you name, but like what if I want a little bit more information about the the Linux system that I'm running on. So I can ask question mark, question mark, how do I list all the in system information? If I could type information in Linux. So I asked that, and then it's going to say, hold on, so you name dash A. So it, I already had you name, but I, I didn't know that the dash A parameter specifies all the information. And I can click just run this query, and it'll say, oh, this will execute this is just a command in your shell. So I click yes, and then it'll specify that. So, you know, as you can see, WSL, and it gives me the particular date, and it gives me the architecture and all that. So that's really cool. So that's a couple of shell commands that I would have had to, say, for instance, go out to the internet and find the answer for but it's not just been generic shell commands too it's also other commands that we can use to be helpful so like one of the ones that i'm always troubling with is different git commands so let's actually hop into a git repository i'm going to hop into personal and then i have a github project that i have called presence light which allows you to take your microsoft teams presence and broadcast it to smart lights so what i want to do for instance and and as you can see here if i do get status like i'm in a i am in a git project this is going to refresh the index give this a second all right so it's done so as you can see here i'm up to date with main so like one of the things that i always have a really really hard time doing is like getting like the last certain commits like in a friendly format so i can say like git question mark which is the shorthand to get a git command specifically how do i list the last five commits Ask that question, it's going to provide that. And then it says git log. So then it says git log is used to list the commits in a repository. Dash five specifies that we only want the last five commits. So I can actually run this command. And again, this will execute a git command and it'll give me that particular output that I'm looking for. So as you can see here, there's some cool things. So, and then I can, and since this opens this up in a, um, in a viewer, I can actually just exit out that right there. So let's try it with like a, a more um, uh, a more complicated example. Like say for instance, what if I want to revert the last few commits? So like I can go get question mark. How do I reset the the history history of the last five commits? So I can ask that. And then it's going to give me that particular thing. So I can get reset dash dash hard head uh, till day five, right? And it gives me an explanation. It's not just it gives me the answer, it also gives me an explanation. So this is way a uh, better experience than having to go out to the internet and hunt for particular things. So get reset resets the current branch dash dash hard means you're discarding any changes. And then you specify that we want to reset to the commit five below that one. So I don't want to run this obviously, but I can, if I want to, I can revise it. So like for instance, how about the last, 10 commits and then it allows me to update that so again like it has context so it knows that the previous question that i asked and i just give it a little bit more direction it gives me a better answer and i can cancel this out here and then finally like if you're using the github cli which i use a lot um it makes my life substantially better as a developer i don't always have to go out to github to figure out things and like what if i wanted to get access to some github cli commands that i might not know so for instance let's just do get gh debt question mark and then i can go um how do i open a new pull request from a branch 
right? So this will actually tell me get a P PR create, right? So that's a simple one, right? So it's used to create a new PR, but maybe let's um, do something also different. So um, how about, so GH question mark, list all issues that have the label external. So I have an external label on my GitHub a repository for this project. If I'm, you know, have a dependency on some other um, pro GitHub project or some external dependency that I am waiting for something to get fixed before I actually have that. So if I do that, it'll actually get up issue list and then it'll give me a list and then I can actually specify the label. Right. So it specifies we want the list up to a thousand issues. Ten thousand issues is way too much. So let's actually revise that query. Can it. How about only 10 issues and i know what this is going to do but again like it's going to specify that we only want issues with the external label right so that's really really cool so like that's a couple of really really cool things that we can do with the github cli but one thing that i think is really really awesome about this is that you know i'm running this all on my local machine like what if i wanted to run this in an interactive environment in the cloud so for instance, GitHub code spaces, right? So you can actually do all the things that I just did in GitHub code spaces too. I can install the CLI, I can authenticate, I can set up um, those convenience commands to be able to make sure that I have access to those shorthand notations always. And as you can see here, let's just do this. So let's ask a question. Um, how do I list the system info in Linux? All right. So as you can see here, I already have commit uh, GitHub Copilot CLI installed and you name dash a again. We've already done this, but I can run this command and then look at that. So GitHub, it gives me the name of the uh, Linux distribution. It gives me the date. It gives me the um, the architecture, all of that. Right. So and then I have Git question mark and I have GH question mark all from within a GitHub repository. And also, like, for instance, this particular project that I have open, this is my blog, which runs Hugo. And I love Hugo because it allows me to build stack sites really, really quickly. But I don't know, like all the Hugo commands. So, like, for instance, I have Hugo version here. So I have a particular version of the Hugo um, CLI. But like, I don't remember how to do some things like um, let's just ask GitHub CLI. And this is very specialized, right? So Hugo is something thing that you know might not um, be installed on every machine or people might not know all the commands so how do I run a local version of a Hugo site right so I click that and then it's going to say Hugo server dash D Right. So he goes to stack site generator, server starts a local web server, it serves a site and D specifies we want to include draft pages. So I can run this here so I can run this command, for instance, and it'll build the site and it says, OK, so um, it looks like I have some issues with my SCSS. Um, not sure what that is. Let's go on to a different thing. So like I could then go get question mark, you know, show last five commits again, like these are all the same things we've done from the from our local machine in WSL, but we're doing it in a you know cloud in a, a environment in the cloud, right? So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's hop back over to our command line. So one thing that I mentioned is that there is a bias for um, there's a bias for Linux. However, you know what? If you wanted to run this from a Windows context, you still could. You could still run that npm install, right? But like, what if you wanted to be able to run it from PowerShell, right? So like, what if you, you know, instead of having bash commands, you want to have PowerShell commands? So there's actually a really cool community project that's been created. So uh, I don't want to pronounce this individual's name, but there's a Copilot CLI for PowerShell. So this, uh, so one thing that's called out specifically is that GitHub Copilot CLI has no direct Windows or PowerShell support, even though it can run on Windows because it's just an NPM package. So uh, this individual created a PowerShell module that allows us to uh, run the GitHub Copilot CLI and get access to those shorthand notations that we talked about. And for instance, what, and the reason why I like this and, and just to be, you know, blatantly honest is that I contributed to it. So when I found this, I it was just question mark, question mark. And then I added get question mark and GH question mark to it. So and this is simple as just installing a particular PowerShell uh, module, adding some things to your PowerShell profile. And that's all added out. So let's actually take a look what that looks like. So I'm going to hop back over to my CLI 
and this is in Windows Terminal, I'm gonna open up a PowerShell command line. So as you can see here, let me just zoom in a little bit. So I have those shorthand notations. So for instance, like how do I get system information in PowerShell? Right. So then I can ask that. And it's going to ask that particular question. Then it's going to say get computer info, which is a PowerShell command that returns information about the current computer. So let's actually run that. It's going to run. It's going to get that computer info. And as you can see here, I have some stuff. So let's just get out of that. And then again, like I have that same experience. So I can go to personal and then back into our presence light application. And then I can do things like get, you know, list. Um, let's just say uh, how do I change the upstream for this repository, right? So that's something that I don't typically know how to do. So get remote, add origin, then you specify the URL and it gives you all that information. So really, really cool stuff. And one of the things that I think is really, really awesome about all of these things that I just showed is that you have the ability to, you know, not have to leave the not have to leave the CLI. You can do this all in the browser. So I was able to not only you know do this from the Linux context. I can also do it from the uh, Windows or PowerShell context and have a PowerShell module that runs in there. So it plugs into your PowerShell profile pretty awesomely. Uh, and I I want to see one. I want to see folks say, oh, I signed up for the the technical preview. I'm excited for it. But I also want to see from folks that are on the technical preview, like what are some of the cool things they've been able to do and how it's been able to make Make their life better so that's it for me today i hope you like this new series of videos and if you're liking them be sure to comment down below tell me what other sort of cool t technology things you want to see cool developer tips cool developer tools um share them with your friends and yeah just let me know i, I really want to see us build amazing things together so that's it for me today take care